Hi Stampers, it's Shannon here with Shannon Sizzle and Stampers and today we are going to be making another fun project with the For My Farmer's Market video. And today we're featuring two stamp sets that I have become some of my favorites in our annual catalog and that's Pure Magic which has all the mystical magical creatures and if you want to pick up one of my, I have two kits available of these mesmerizing creatures class for a week from Friday. If you want to come in person in our local, fantastic. If not, I have it in a to-go version as well. Um, this is your last call for that. So two kits available. And it is being paired with Stepping Stones, which is, I think, my all-time or right up there, all-time favorite sentiment stamp set that Stampin' Up! has ever carried. And I just love it. Not only are the sayings powerful, but they're all done with different fonts. They're different sizes. But the other thing that I really love is that they're unique in the fact that they lend themselves to a bit of an artistic flair for you when you're creating projects. And so I hope that you'll kind of get a feel for that in this particular project today, which I'm calling a piece of desk decor. You're going to notice my workspace is a bit messy and that is because this is a little bit of a messy project and I've had to record this for whatever reason Pegasus is not my friend he has really caused me some angst um, I have filmed this three times and had camera problems every time so you're gonna see me do some pieces but you're going to not see me do this completely step by step all the way through the entire project. So we are stamping with our stays on black ink. Remember that stays on is very porous. Uh, it's a solvent, so it's great for porous things, but you can use it on anything, but you want to make sure that you close that up right away. And because we're going to be watercoloring, it is perfect because it's a solvent, it's not waterproof. So we've stamped your Pegasus on a piece of the 100 fluid watercolor paper. For the desk decor, you're gonna need a piece of four by eight cardstock in your choice, and a coordinate piece of cardstock, three and a half by three and a half square, and then a piece of DSP, which means designer series paper. That's the same, three and a half by three and a half. This particular designer series paper is from our Happiness Hues collection. I love it. All the things are kind of in these rainbow variations of, of uh, color. And you can look really closely and see the brush marks that were photographed in the paper in order to create it. So that's a really fun element. You'll probably also need some embellishments and we'll get to that later. We're also going to be using our eye block, which I love for this. And we are going to be using our reinkers. So for this, we are going to use our pool party. We're going to use some flirty flamingo. We're going to probably use some polished pink. I like to put them far enough away, but close enough that if I want to blend the colors, I can because this is fresh freesia. We're really using this just like a painter's palette. I'm going to put a dot of navy. The navy is so dark, it's easy to overpower. And we're going to put a dot of pale papaya way up there. I don't even know if I'm going to use pale papaya. And then we're going to put a dot of coastal cabana right below pool party in case you want a little bit more darker color. You don't have to even have this many colors if you don't want. So now we're going to use our water painter. I have our original one. We do have the new ones. I just like this particular tip for me a little better. And I've still got some color on there from my last uh, video run. So first off, we're just going to water down that paper all over that image really well. And then we're gonna just go in and drop our ink in and let our ink and the water mix together and do the work for us. 
When we're ready to change colors, we just merely let that paint out. Then we're gonna grab some Pool Party. And you can see I'm really trying to pull in the colors from the paper. And if I need more water, I just, if I need it to have more color, I just go there. This I feel like really is yearning for some pink. But this is just all you. What do you want it to look like? Sometimes a color combination looks better than others, so you get a unique effect every time. So I think we'll stop there. I just like to make sure I get color everywhere on it. I'll set my painter aside, and I'm going to push that eye block off of my paper. Now, to speed up the drying process, you could let this dry overnight, especially if you're making multiples. But to speed it up, I usually try to push my water out from my image. And then you can also take a paper towel or I have my, what I call my crafting towel. And that's not gonna matter uh, that it's kinda unky because it's gonna get cut out. So for this particular project, the way I'm using it, I'm only really concerned about the Pegasus himself having good color. All right, so we're gonna set him aside. You can see this is one I did earlier with a lot more bright boldness. This was polished pink, flirty flamingo, calypso coral, and pale papaya with a tiny bit of navy. That's navy in it, not purple. But when it's mixed with the pink, it, it blends and comes into that deep purple. So that's one part. So the next step is to cut the pegasus out. And then you're going to fold your card base in half, and you're going to adhere your DSP on there perfectly in a layer. And then we're gonna do the next technique for this card. And for that, I'm gonna take my little scissor, my paper snips, and I'm just gonna come in and cut maybe a quarter, eighth to a quarter of an inch in on that side. And then I'm gonna tear it. This is the torn paper technique that's rolled. So rolled torn paper. Sometimes it's called exposing something, ex exposed art. I can't remember. I've seen it called a few things. But there's no equipment or tools needed for this, just your fingers. Um, you could even just start with your fingers. You wouldn't even have to snip in with your snips. And then you're merely going to stamp on your sentiment. You're going to stamp onto there. So, for example... Let me bring over this piece. I've got this piece of scrap vanilla so that my stuff doesn't get watery or ink leaked on it. So I'm using the follow your own star sentiment and I'm gonna stamp that right like this. Okay, and then the idea is this is on your card and you're going to end up rolling this paper so that you see the sentiment. So to roll the paper, I just merely start rolling and I try to get it to be as tight as possible. Make sure to close my, my uh, stays on. So I wanna try to get it as tight as possible and then just rolling, rolling, rolling right down there after I've done the tear. And then I take a glue dot, which, where did mine go? There they are. I just take a glue dot and just to keep me safe, I'm gonna, since I've got my paper rolled up here, I'm gonna do thing. I'm just gonna put my glue dot right on there and roll my paper, that last roll, right onto it. And then your next step is to take your adhesive all the way around here and you want to glue it perfectly on to the square. 
because if it's not perfect, you ruin that illusion, which is also perfect for the Pure Magic set. And if it's a little bit off, just take your snips or a trimmer and go trim it in so it's perfectly aligned. But you want it to open up to that, that sentiment. And if you want, before you glue it onto your designer series paper, you can roll it with some ribbon. So on this one, I rolled it with a combination of our glitter organdy ribbon and the sweet sorbet metallic ribbon. So I used those two and did a little bit of a roll and a knot around it. So you don't have to do that or you can, it's totally up to you. And then the final step to this is after you have cut out your Pegasus, it is to cut him out and put him on. I've put him right over the knot with my ribbon. And then I've taken my Winkastella glitter pen. Ooh. Taken my Winkastella glitter pen and just gone in and given him some sparkle because, you know, it is Pegasus after all. So sparkle him up, bling him up. And then I've added some of our opal rounds to embellish the card. The reason I love this card, and you can see this one I made with shimmer white paper, so it even gives more sparkle to it. But I love these uh, dust decor, I call them. I know you could look at it and claim it's a card. If I were to mail that to someone, I would really have to um, put it in a padded envelope or something so that it was safe. But these are great for a coworker. If you want to encourage someone or you've got a coworker's birthday or a neighbor that you can hand this off to, they're beautiful. And because they function as a card, they're perfectly sized at that smaller size, four by four, to sit on a fireplace mantle, to sit on someone's desk at, uh, at work or at home, to sit in an entertainment center cubby. They really are nicely sized for that. Now, I want to talk to you about another project idea that I have that I'm going to be playing with with this torn paper, and that is instead of the designer series paper behind it, putting a photo. So I was um, just up at Crested Butte for the Wildflower Festival this last weekend, and I was thinking I could put, instead of the designer series paper behind this panel, I could put one of my wildflower pictures and then instead of the Pegasus, I could stamp one of these floral images from our wonderful, wonderful world stamp set um, that is a celebration reward. So if you purchase $100 net before the end of August, you can choose this as one of your options, provided it's still available. Now, all of our celebration reward items are limited edition and they are only as supply while supplies last. So get that early. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be a cool effect to have the torn paper, but it's revealing an actual photo that you took because then it makes it even more meaningful to people. Um, and then have your accent piece be something that coordinates back to that photo. Or if it's a picture of someone, their little face peeking out, maybe this is something that they love. So if you have, like I have a granddaughter who likes mermaids, I could have done a mermaid here instead of the Pegasus. Or if you have a grandson who loves bears, you could use one of the bears out of the designer series paper of the Happy Forest Suite. So make it your own, make it meaningful. But these are really great. I call them desk decor because of the size and because of the amount of dimension to it. You not only have the paper roll, you have ribbon, and then you have an accent decor piece. Now, if you like the torn paper and you're okay with that element, but the adding the image up here, you feel like that's too, too much for mailing or whatever giving, instead of cutting out your Pegasus, you could have just stamped him inside or cut him and do him as a layer inside your card. So either way that you, you know, whichever way you want to do it is perfectly perfect because we are all creators and we create unique art that comes from our hearts. And we want to share that with those that are in our lives. So I hope that you really enjoy this dust decor. 
um, whether you use it and make quantities up to sell at a farmer's market, whether you make multiples for gift giving, or whether you just make individual ones to give randomly to those special people in your life, I hope that you will take this project idea and run with it. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.